It's almost two o'clock on Saturday here at Fort Griffin State Historic Area. At two o'clock, there's the Horns and Tails program put on by Dub, the assistant herd manager, the official assistant herd manager of the Texas State Longhorn Herd. So let's go see what Dub has to say. Call the cows, the longhorns, Call them up out of the brush and he's giving them some sweet treats so we can see them. The big old long horns on that one. Now well, that's pretty cool. They like those range cubes, don't they? They sure do. That, that's cow crack. That's, that's a, a can in the bag. We didn't get them all up. We're still missing a bull, a couple of cows, and some little calves. But those cows won't bring the little calves up. And the bull, he's slow. He's old. Uh, he may come up in a little bit. I'm Dub. I'm your assistant herd manager here. This is our group herd steer, cow, calves, bulls, older bulls, and in between. What uh one of the reasons we like to put on this program and I'm gonna talk for about 15 or 20 minutes, it won't be long and then we can just talk about whatever y'all want to. Uh, the thing that that I find interesting about these cattle, and I've been around them my whole life. My family's done cattle for hundreds of years. Uh, and I've been, these cattle are actually fairly intelligent. But what's really interesting about them that some people don't know and some people do, is that Texas owns a lot of its private lands to these guys. After the North-South War, when, uh, well, everything was the economy was devastated, wasn't no money, wasn't no jobs, wasn't nothing to eat when those guys were coming back. And they'd already been moving cattle, longhorns, but it wasn't as big a deal because there wasn't the demand for them. It actually, it wasn't worth much anyhow. Uh, the war killed a bunch of cattle. I mean, what, what they didn't eat, they killed just to be killing stuff. It's war. Yeah. So when, they, when it got over with, they needed beef and meat. And these guys... Well, they started herding them up, gathering them up, and they were gathering them in South Texas, and there, there was several trails, there's three or four of them that everybody knows about pretty much. The Great Western Trail was right here where we're at, and it started in the way South Texas, and it went, gosh, they went all the way up in Canada. You know, they, they moved these cattle a long way. But the herds would be about average 2,500 to 3,000 head. And they, uh, they estimate that within about a, from 66, 67 to about 91, 96, somewhere in there. The, the, the originally they said 10 million, now they're thinking it might have been a whole lot more than that. The, the, there were longhorns that went north. They averaged anywhere from, from that time period, depending on a lot of things, anywhere from 20 to $40 a head. That adds up, that adds up even to today's money. And, and what happened was, or what, what, what Texas is so grateful about, that these guys made enough money on those cattle drives but those guys came back and bought up a bunch of land. That's why Texas has so much private land. There's these big, these big ranchers and, and, and big drovers, and uh, they, uh, they, they made enough money off these cattle. And, and some of the big ranches that you, that you see today are from that. Uh, the Matthews over here, mm -hmm. they, they did a lot of field driving, herding. Uh, a lot of those guys were going up through Colorado instead of going through Kansas. And it just depends on you know how they were wanting to go, and some of them did go through Kansas. The other thing that a lot of people just don't know about, that I'll point it out, is they were called uh, the uh, the diesel engine of the westward expansion. They, these guys were used, they call them oxen. Any, any kind of bovine, any cattle that you put behind a hip or a, a wagon or a buggy or whatever you put it behind and it becomes an oxen. Well, these guys were very popular as oxen. That they, uh, we've got pictures up there at the, uh, at the uh, visitor Center for in and it's in Wich or Weatherford. I think they would talk all about Weatherford. 
and it's four big heavy freighters. I think it's four, and they're those big, big heavy wagons, those freighting wagons, and they're they're 15 foot tall of buffalo hides. All three of them are, and there's 10 yoke of oxen, longhorn oxen, attached to those four freighters. And that's a that's a monstrosity. You can try to get 20 of these animals turning, and uh, the guys that, that drove them were called, or that ran them were called, they were teamsters, uh, bull whippers, uh, there's all kinds of names. Said that, said that you could smell them before you saw them, and there might be four or five of them running those big teams. And they, most of the time they were barefoot, smoking a cigar, chewing tobacco, and said so they'd come up with cuss words nobody ever heard of. Said you could hear them long before you, you know, or smell them before you hear them, and hear them long time before you saw them. They're pretty rough guys. But uh, the, the, the first hand information from these, these, these teamsters was that the intelligence of these animals compared to mules, which most wow. people are aware of how, really? how intelligent a mule is. I mean, army, that's all army uses mules. I mean, they, yeah. on their ambulance and some of their faster stuff, they'd use horses, but big draft horses. But even, even the uh, army, about all they'd use on a wagon was, were mules. So that, that says a whole lot. We never, in my personal experience, we never mess with them. And, and, and the reason why a lot of people had quit messing with them, the carcass to, to body weight, you can't haul as many of them. You can't get them, I mean, you can't work them like you can pole cattle or even Herefords. Uh, they're, they're, they, they require a little bit more room. Even when we haul them, we've got these big traders, these easily traders, and we can put about half of the longhorns in there that you can get Right, you know, pole, pole cattle or, or, or shorthorn cattle in there. So that, that's where a lot of difference is. Uh, now they're saying that they're, I think they're kind of making a comeback as far as the meat because they're they're uh, they're low on cholesterol or they're lean meat, and they're, they're saying that it's it's. Uh, I was reading something the other day said that they're, you know they're comparing uh, longhorn meat to seafood, which I don't know how that works, but it, you know it sounds good. Yeah. So it sells. But it's yeah, and that you know it's. That's kind of one of the things, a lot of the things that we like to point out is, is these, these cattle actually, they they had what they'd call uh, uh, lead steers. In, in some of those herds, they'd have three or four lead steers. And those guys would kind of be the ones that take off, and you see them in the movies, you know, those John Wayne movies and stuff. Like they're, they'll be in the front, and they're leading. The, the other side of that story is some of those, some of those steers were, were, were good enough steers that when they got to wherever they were going, whether it be a rail yard or if they were selling off bits and pieces as they went north, which they did a lot of that too, that they'd bring those lead steers back and use them again. Some of those lead steers made four or five trips. Wow. And that's that's pretty impressive when you start. And, so that, and after after a time or two, what's saying, this is all firsthand. We've got journals in there, what these cowboys wrote on these trail drives. And <clears throat> said said after a couple of times of going north, that these guys would actually remember their river crossings, where good grass was, and, and good places to bed down. That they that they had that kind of a memory, which that sounds that sounds <laughs> sounds kind of crazy, but you can take. We've got those pens back there. We'll bring in when we're weaning and working. Sometimes we'll we'll leave them in there, and uh, maybe we'll even halt or break two or three of them. But after you run them through, and it's like one of those little rat mazes. Well, it, we can cut them in and cut it out. But after a time or two, you can tell them those guys figure out what they're supposed to do. And it's, it's pretty interesting to watch. Uh, what was I going to do? There's some other stuff that, uh, the, the, the other thing that's, that, that a lot of people might not know about these cattle, uh, we have cows out here that are in their 20s still giving birth, still having calves. Mm. Which that's on, on your English bred cattle. Uh, that's that's about their, 12 years, you, you, yep. you want to start thinking about doing something, you know, because they'll still have them, but it might be every other year. These, when they get to 20, they're still they're still pretty regular at 22, 23, they might start skipping years. Uh, the longevity of them, the, and like I say, they, they, uh, they just, they just, you know, they don't require near the, the vaccination, they don't require near the, the, the maintenance, and uh, they, they can live off of stuff of, of English bred cattle won't live off of, won't eat, and that was one of the other reasons that, that they used them so much for the oxen. Uh, a pair of oxen, longhorn oxen, in the day would have went for sixty dollars. Uh, a pair of a pair of uh, good pulling horses, one hundred and sixty, one hundred and eighty. A pair of mules would have went for three hundred. 
But what happened was when they started doing their westward expansion and going places, uh, they didn't know what they were getting into. They didn't know what kind of water they were going to run across. They, they, they weren't real sure, you know, what, what, what was out there. And these guys, if they, they, what the, they could eat more varieties of plants, live off of less, and go further on less water, and then you didn't have to worry about people trying to steal them from you as bad. That's, that, that's something the Indians really didn't care that much about cattle as much as they did horses and mules. And the reason being, they could go up in the middle of the night, they could steal a herd of horses and be gone. They'd be 20 miles away before you woke up. But these guys here, they, they were slower and they just, they didn't want to mess with them as much, so they didn't. But that kind of, kind of helped those people out that were traveling and didn't know exactly where they were going. Their horns grow their whole life. Uh, cows, bulls, all of them's got them. They don't, some people think, well, them's all bulls. They got horns. Well, the, the cows have horns in this bunch, too. How long does it take, like, you see this one here close to us with really short horns? How long, how old are they when they've got the really long ones like that? The, the, this heifer's probably six, seven months old. When these older cattle like this one here, if you look the way we've got them branded, on their left hip will be the uh, the five star Texas uh -huh. brand. That's that's our that's a historic. If you see it on a on a cattle that bit came out of this herd somewhere. On the other side, you'll see some numbers. Uh, the top number will be that the that the number that it was as a calf born as a calf. The bottom number will be the year. So like this little one down here, some black one. It's going to be a, uh, uh, last year was 20. The ones that we do this year, the bottom one will say 21. So you can kind of look at some of these older ones, I mean, a little bit older, and you'll see how old they are, you know. Uh, like this cow down here, it's got the white belly and the red. Mm -hmm. It's probably, she's probably six years old, seven maybe. I'm just guessing. I can't see her numbers from here. But, uh, yeah, they... Their old horns, after after three or four years, they, their horns are getting, you know, pretty good size, yes, ma'am. And the steers are a little bit different. I mean, they and some of them will grow faster than others. Some of them, some of them will grow, you know, there's three basic horn types. There's what they call, it's the, uh, it's the oxbow, the corkscrew, which they, some of them call that the Texas twist, and there's what they call the rippers. And the rippers, they, we don't, I, I really don't have anything in here that's got good, good rippers, but they just kind of came out and went, went forward and they call them rippers. That's exactly what they do. They, they rip stuff up. Right. up so the longhorn cattle, are they native to North America or were they an import? See, now that, the, we're, we're going to say these are native to Texas and North America. Now, where they actually came from, they 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 the, they originally came, went to Santa Domingo and Columbus's second voyage, which was 1492, I believe, somewhere in there. And then they went into, they wound up on the, into Mexico. They were doing some explore, exploration. They took took some of them with them. That's how they that's how they fed themselves. And they wound up going on their missions. And when those missions moved up into uh, northern Mexico and then started coming across the Rio Grande, the Longhorns kind of came with them. But they wound up going about 400 years on their own. And, and and this, the Longhorns are actually native of Texas and native of North America. They are, they are Texas own, they're North America's own breed in Texas own breed. So they were, they were here, they weren't an import from Europe. They, they are the, 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 the result of themselves that were, they're, they're different. What they were called, they were Spanish cattle, okay, and they came from uh, their Portugal is where they originated from, and then there's been some other stuff. But if you look at what they came from, they're nothing close, or not even nothing close. But these guys kind of they evolved away from the original that's, breed stock. That's exactly right. Okay, they, they they out of out of God and their own their own spirit to survive. They just didn't survive. They thrive. They actually. The cattle, and I don't know what they looked like back then. I haven't been able to find out. But what what they call where they came from, and you look at the pictures of what they can, they they don't look nothing like these cattle to me. Their 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 bodies are similar, but they're kind of they're short horn or they're they're different looking. But uh, like I say, four or five hundred years of doing their own thing, and 
man didn't manage them. They just, they just kind of survived on their own. And uh, everything that they got, like the horn or, you know, their tools or weapon or defense system, their legs for walking, the, the way they can eat, the way they can go with that, well, all that stuff is, is, has got them where they are, which no other cattle, as far as I know of, no other North American cattle or cattle in North America can do this. Kind of uh, throws that uh, Big Bang theory out the window, doesn't it? And says God's in charge of everything. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd, 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 I wouldn't argue with that either. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't argue with that because I think I think God does have influence on that. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. That's, I think God did have, did, does have influence on that. It kind of blows that Big Bang yes, theory off the map and says God's in charge. I mean, these fellas right here, that's girls, prove it. That's, that's, so, that's, so what's the flag? That's a that's a that's a guide on. So yeah, I like to I like to throw some different stuff up. This is just supposed to be about Longhorns. When I took when I when I started this job, I've been here about three years. My family is from Thoughtmore County. They've been here since the 1880s. So I grew up around this place. And this, you know, when I was a little kid, these were wooden pins, and they looked like dinosaurs to me. You know, I was a little boy right now. But. Uh, they, they wanted somebody to help with the cavalry because Fort Griffin was a cavalry post, a cavalry fort, and which is a little bit different than some of the other forts. They didn't they didn't build a whole lot of permanent structures, and when they built it, they probably knew they was going to abandon it at some point and, and move further west, which is what, what they did. So part of my job is when we do our living history programs and we have our big event and some other things we go to, I'm their cavalry guy. So that's a, that's a, that's an actual guide on from a, a, a cavalry company, and I'd like to bring it out and that's a cavalry horse, and sometimes if I got time, I'll even bring out some, some military saddles and some other stuff that people can look at, and, and uh, I've got some saddles that not very many people have seen, and we're pretty proud of them, but that's, a, that's another day, I guess. <laughs> But that's what that's what that. I was just wondering why you had the guide on there. I, I knew what it was, but that's, you didn't talk about it. And it's, well, that's a lot of people to ask. <laughs> <laughs> why does he have the guide on? But that's the the part of, part of what ties Fort Griffin in and with, with these Longhorns is there was actually quite a bit of cavalry in, reinforcement, cavalry protection, cavalry. I've got I've got firsthand reports of. Uh, uh, lieutenants from Concho that wrote in reports of where, for instance, they were going to uh, uh, Pecos River and they're talking about, he was right in between, one report he was in between 25,000 head of cattle. There was, there was five herds and he was, he was, they were stationed in camp within reach of all of them because there was uh, reports of depredations and Indians and they, they, they would send them out and they would actually travel with, with herds. And that's that's kind of how the cavalry gets back around. We're, you know, we're, we're kind of wanting to give them their because they ought to be talked about too. And a lot of people don't realize all the stuff that they did. They thought they just went and killed Indians, and, but they did do some cowboying and some. And they they went and got herds and brought them back. And they, uh, I think some of those guys might have been. I don't know. That's people asking. Well, would you rather been a on the on the herd drive, on the cattle drive, or would you rather been the cavalry? I think I'd rather been on the cattle drive because I think they ate better. Yeah, they I always. Think they probably got a little bit more sleep, yeah. and they were they'd come sure well mount, better mounted, yeah. and that's what and that's what people. I mean, they had guys buying horses, and they were buying up lot horses, and getting them however they could. We, they didn't know what they were getting, and a lot of them guys that, that were that were in the army in the cavalry. A lot of those guys, it's hard to believe. They didn't know how to ride horses. They didn't know nothing about a horse. Right. Wow. Yeah. They were all city slickers. That, that's, that's, that's just about right. Well, there you have it. Straight from the mouth of Dub, the assistant herd manager out here at Fort Griffin State Historic Area. Truly a wealth of knowledge. If you're here on Saturday, you really need to go at 2 o'clock. You need to go check in with Dub because he, it's a different show every time and he really caters it to to the audience so if the audience has actually seen it before then he'll 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 talk about military history cavalry history he's he's, he's a really he's an interesting guy all right so if this is your first visit to dude rv i sure appreciate you sticking by to this point and for those of you who have been following along man i sure appreciate it that's why i do what i do and for my patrons, you guys rock.
All right, y'all come back now, you hear?